Hey gamers, welcome back to another Huppers video. In my last video, I explained at a very base level what affects your earnings in the game. I chose to focus on this because as much as we all love playing games, we're also investors and want a return on our investment. So if you haven't already watched that video, then go ahead and click the link down in the description to go check it out. For this video, I'm going to be walking you through how to actually get started and play this game without having to use a calculator. Yep, just with a little common sense and some helpful tools, you'll be playing this game like a pro. Trust me on this. Before we hop in, a huge shout out to the Hoppers community. For real, you guys are awesome. The resource contribution has been amazing, and that's why a total beginner can come in today and by using the right tools can actually start being profitable without making the unnecessary mistakes most of the old heads did. So you've watched my last video, and now you have an idea how your profits are calculated. Let's start playing hoppers. First, you want to buy the right hopper. How do you make that choice? Well, if you're all about the art, then simply buy the one that appeals to you the most. But we know why you're here. You want to know how to buy a profitable hopper. Okay, I got you. Unless you're a whale, in which case you really don't need to listen to me ramble. You can just splash your cash and go for the legendary hoppers. Your choice of a hopper will have a lot to do with what you can afford. So what I'll do here is give you choices based on a humble budget that can be scaled up. Let's say you have two AVAX and that's all you can spend right now. How do you choose a good hopper for that price? One thing to always remember is not to be intimidated by the bigger players in the game when they post their earnings or how many hoppers they have. We're all working with different sized pockets and so it's important to set realistic expectations for yourself based on your own level of investment. Also, shout out to Alex on Twitter who rightly pointed out that the vast majority of players aren't whales, with majority owning 5 or less hoppers. So you're not alone. Now back to buying a hopper. Like I said, absolutely no calculations needed. Just like my previous video, we're keeping this all dumbed down and simple. And to help us not to have to calculate, we'll be using some tools made by the brilliant Hoppers community members. First, let's head to the official Hoppers marketplace. I want you to completely ignore the hopper's rarity because it plays no part in earning fly. The results are already sorted from lowest to highest price by default. So you'll want to scroll all the way down to the two AVAX hoppers. In reality, you can actually get some good deals if you look closely enough through all that's for sale at and below two AVAX. But this is a quicker way to find your hopper based on your budget, and it's not often you see high-skilled hoppers listed for cheap. Next, you want to start going through all of the hoppers at 2 AVAX. So what are we looking for exactly? Unless some miracle happens and you find a good bargain, you're probably not going to find a tier 2, tier 3 or tier 4 hopper for 2 AVAX. So what we're focusing on here is to find a tier 1 hopper for about 2 AVAX which has high stats in either of strength, vitality and agility. If you want an even quicker way of finding this, then use the filters here to select. Not all at once, but one after the other, just like you see here. First select 8, 9 and 10 on strength and have a look. Anything around 2 AVAX? If not, then remove strength and select the same stats for agility 
and then vitality. Be aware that we aren't trying to optimize here, but rather give you a good chance of making a fair return on your investment. And the very first important thing to pay attention to is your hopper skills. Optimizing would include looking at V shares and looking at the adventure distributions to help you determine whether you should go specifically for strength, agility, or vitality. So back to it. Let's say you spot a hopper you think is worth the price. To ensure you're making the right choice, let's use this life-saving tool made by Ethwise on Twitter. Simply put in the details of the hopper you've selected. To give you better earning chances for tier 1, ensure you get a hopper with at least an 8 on the main attribute being rewarded. You can use a 0 on the votes because this calculation is only to show you the minimum fly you can get so you can make the right purchase. And we're also assuming you're on a budget and can't afford to vote right away. Bear in mind that this tool shows your earnings after removing your level up costs. So when you begin playing, you realize your actual earnings will be higher than what is shown here. So when you put in the details of the hopper, you'll see right here the best option for you judging by the stats you've entered. You can also see a projected ROI based on the selling price. Huge props to Ethwise for this tool. And don't forget to donate if you like his work. You can then play around with this by looking at another and another and another until you find one you're certain has the best earning potential for you based on your 2 AVAX max price. When you find your perfect hopper, then go right ahead and make the purchase. All you've got to do is click buy, then confirm the transaction, wait for the confirmation, and that's it. You now own your first hopper. This process is the same for anyone looking to invest higher amounts of AVAX. The more money you have to invest, the better hoppers you can get but always use this tool to calculate your potential earnings so you don't make the mistake of buying a higher tier hopper that is really earning less than a lower tier hopper. In the case of the higher tiers, like tier two, for example, where strength and intelligence are needed, you can afford to be less aggressive with the filters so you can select anywhere from five upwards for both stats but do not choose to buy a hopper with all main stats being 5 or 6. You would most likely be better off buying a tier 1 with higher single stats. And a final word of warning. Don't buy a hopper that you'll need to level up unless you're okay with spending the required amount to level it up. I'll talk more about leveling up soon. I borrowed some of this buying strategy from 420 DeFi and Justin the Photographer on Twitter, and you can click the links down in the description to read their threads. You've gotta give them props because they came before me and really did the dirty work and made my work a lot easier. Definitely give them a follow, they're really smart guys. So now you've got the hopper you want. The rest is easy. You already know where you want to stake your hopper because you use the tool which has done the calculations for you. So go ahead and stake your hopper. And that's it. You're in the game. Next thing you want to do is vote. Now I understand that if you're on a budget, you may need to wait for your earnings in order to participate in the voting. But that's fine. Just make sure you vote on the adventures you're in. A community accepted strategy is to split your earnings in three. One third to level up your hopper, one third to vote on your adventure, and take one third for profits. Now, I'm gonna have to pay one third nerd for using these words so much. So this is how it works. If you look at your hopper, 
you should see that you have a maximum amount of fly you can earn on the level your hopper is on. You are assured to earn three times the amount needed to level up your hopper on every level. So all you need to do is pay attention to the countdown right here. It shows you approximately how many hours or minutes are left till your hopper stops earning and needs to be leveled up. You don't need to check this every minute. Just set a timer on your phone and when it rings, you can come back and check on your hopper. Usually, this timer will never be accurate because your earnings are affected by the activities of other players. While other players are leveling up or voting, their shares increase and therefore decrease your share as well. This means when you come back at the supposed time, it may still need an extra 30 minutes or more. So going back to voting, I started out quite humble with this game, and this is the technique I used and I'm still using. Once you start on a new level, set your timer to about half of the time needed to get the max fly. When your timer rings, come back and claim all the fly you've gotten so far. Take this to the voting tab and stake it so it starts generating V-Fly for you. Then go back to your hopper and set a timer for the amount of time it'll take to get to its level cap. When your timer rings, come back and check on your hopper. If it has reached its cap, claim all fly. If not, keep setting your timer till it reaches cap. When your hopper has stopped earning and you've claimed all remaining fly for the level, you should have enough to level up your hopper. So go ahead and level it up. Once you've leveled up, start the process all over again. Whatever leftover fly you have, take that as profit. Swap that for USDC or AVAX if you like. You've earned it. The last step of this strategy is to cast your vote twice a day. You can do this more often if you want to ensure you're getting as much bonus as you can, but it may not be worth the stress of constantly checking your phone to cast your votes. Voting once or twice a day will still see you getting a fairly stable amount of fly. With this technique, you don't have to worry about hitting your V-share cap because you keep adding to your staked fly. You're always gonna have an increasing amount of votes to cast every day. You can repeat this technique for every single level and it works just fine for players who don't wanna babysit their hoppers all day and just wanna check on them a couple of times a day. So there you have it. That's my take on how you play this game. The no calculation and no stress strategy. I wouldn't call it easy mode, but it's definitely not hard mode. I'm pretty sure I missed out on a few key points, but that's what the community is there for, to call me out in the comments and on Twitter. So go ahead guys, but be gentle. Before we end this video, I'm gonna give a quick take on breeding as it relates to buying a hopper. We already know that the tadpoles are going to be heavily involved in the next season of hoppers. And the forward thinking players have already started buying up some tadpoles. But if you don't want to have to spend money on tadpoles, then the smart thing to do would be to factor in fertility when choosing a hopper to buy. Buying a hopper with really low fertility, especially if it's your only hopper, is a really bad idea because it means you have a very low chance of getting a tadpole from the breeding pool. So don't make the mistake I made. If you can afford to pay a little more, then think about fertility when choosing a hopper. It's sure to be rewarding in the long run. To help you with the calculation, here's another neat tool by Catania on Discord. Check the link in the description to download this fertility calculator. I meant it when I said you wouldn't have to do any calculations. Almost all the tools you need have been provided by the community, 
and they did it all for free. You love to see it. I would strongly advise you to join the Hoppers Discord and go into the community resources channel where you will see all of these tools I've mentioned and more. Just use these tools and follow in the footsteps of those before you and you'll be making progress with this game in no time. Have fun playing, stay safe, and until next time, earn on gamers, you deserve it.